Hi everyone, welcome back to Urban Info and Mod Informatics and Modeling. This is Josh, and today we're going to cover about software and plugins to import ORSM data or OpenStreetMap data into modeling, into modeling software like 3DX Max and Rhinoceros. So the first one that we want to have a look is MapRoom. So MapRoom is from 3DS Max, but we're not going to cover that today because Firstly, I, I do not recommend this too much, except if you're doing, if you're using 3ds Max, then yes, I do recommend it because this, you need to pay for this. And the other plugin that I want to cover today is with Grasshopper and it's called Elk. So Elk is different from MapRoom and, but it's, it's, it has a similar function. So what you want to do is just to go to Food for Rhino and you want to search for Elk. And that's the plugin. And you just download it. So it's very similar function. It's very similar. It has a very similar feature with map room. The difference is that it's the different software. So from elk page, you want to have a look at this download table. So this shows the history of versions of elk in the grasshopper. So everything is in Rhino 4 and Rhino 5 but you want to have the latest version, which is this one here. So you just, you also need to have a look at the version and the date because sometimes they are not in an order. Like for example, this is 0 0.3 and then jump straight to 2.2. .2. So make sure you have the latest one and make sure you have the account login before, because if not, you cannot um, download anything. So download that. And it's quite a big file. It is very different from the other component, the other component folder from Grasshopper, because this one comes in a folder. So you go to the component folder like that. And then you go to the place where you download it. And then Extract it here. Now you can delete the original zip file and you have this folder. This has, this folder has .dll and this is the stuff that are important for the component to work. Okay, so you have that installed and you have that copied. The next thing you, you need to do is just to restart Grasshopper and Rhino. Okay, once you have restarted your Grasshopper and your Rhino, you can look at Elk, which is this extra. It's weird because Grasshopper doesn't really read Elk component as a specific component, but it's sort of going to the extra. So the extra tab has components that are not named. And this is the other one that I have, the Hoop Snake. This is for repetition of, um, this is for repeating the algorithm. Is a feedback component, but we're not going to use that today. So you have these three components here from Elk. So what you want to do is just to um, try to have a look at each each component. The first one is here. It's called the location, and it requires a file. Now this file you need to download it from the OpenStreetMap or uh, open source data map, and from any any other websites, but I recommend to use OSM, OpenStreetMap, and it's covered in the other video. So you want to have a file that's linked here and select one existing file. So the file is quite different and you have to look for .osm. So in this exercise, I'm going to cover it in Dananong. It's a suburb in Melbourne. So I have exported this from OpenStreetMap on the other day. And you can see the video in the video in the series. So just like that. And it's going to load in. And it's loaded in. And you can you have the output of OSM data. All the all the data like the points and the geolocations. Also the file. 
the, lo the longitude and the latitude. So this all consists of data, not just the shape data, not just the point data in the OSM, but also the geographic location of the data. So this has longitude and latitude that can be exported into KML or something, and then upload it back to websites such as Mapbox in My Maps, in Google My Maps. So why use this? Because you want to have a modeling, a modeling tool, and this sort of show the urban scale rather than rather than you have to make it one by one and then just trace it trace it from Google Maps and this one's more easier and this is one this one's more accurate because you can edit it in OpenStreetMap or other people can edit it in OpenStreetMap. But you want to make sure that the Rhino increments is in meters because you're dealing with urban scale data and urban scale model. You don't want to do it in millimeters or else it's going to have you're going to have like five digits and probably six digits six digits numbers and you don't want to deal with that because that's going to be tedious so how do we show the data is using this component it's called osm data and requires the osm point data as a list so just import that and you want to have the file path to this so straight of that now it's going to show all the points location of the points from the OSM just like that so you can quite see the outline of Dandenong so that's north so that's north over there so you can see the outline but you want to ha but since you want to do it in urban modeling you want to have it in 3d shapes so the the way you do it is just to right click this component right click in the center not at the edge because it's going to have a different options because when you right click at the edge it's going to right click at this output here but when you right click in the component it's going to have the options of the component so feature type building that's cor that's correct we want to have the building and you want to create 3d buildings now the 3d buildings still based on the data of the OpenStreetMap and this is how it looks so it's going to extract the data from OpenStreetMap so every single data that you put in OpenStreetMap is going to affect is going to impact how this is going to shape so make sure you have the all the, the correct data in OSM apologies just now so that's the north so that's the north so that's the Dandenong market and the station is right along this line here Okay, moving on. Now we have already th the 3D buildings, but how about some roads or railways? Because you also want to work with that elements in the urban modeling stuff. So what I recommend you to do is just to copy this, copy this for five times, for five times, and Elk has these options to show different categories of the OSM. So you want, for example, highway. It's creating points of highways. And for this one here, for example, you want the railway. And if you want the waterway, you can have waterway like that. Now this shows as points. And the thing with points, you can connect dots using polyline like so so that's the water waterway of Dandenong that's the Dandenong Creek I think and just connect all of these there and that's how you create an urban city from elk now another thing that I recommend you to do is just to have to file a layer differentiation just to make it easier so this one has buildings as a tree. So you can just bake it. But before I bake it, make sure I have different layers just to make your life, just to make my life easier and yours as well. Buildings, for example, and then highways. 
waterways and railways and then you have what you might want to have different colors to each for example waterways is blue in the last bit as dark green so you want to bake according to the layers that's the railway and go to railway and group bake that's the that's the highway go to highways and group and bake that's the waterways and group Sorry, so this is wrong color. Yep. So that's that. And lastly, you want to bake the buildings. And in group. So when you've done that, if we preview off this, you're going to have the suburbs. So it's really clear now where's where, where's where and what's what, and you don't want to have the points here. So what you want to do is just to just to selection filter, and then just deselect the curves, everything except the points. Select all. So the selection filter is just going to select the items that uh, that sticked over here delete those and there you have it that's done and done for you now there are other things in there are other things in elk that it can do so there are also like for example points for nature You want, for example, if you want to put some trees in it, you have like natural, and then from natural, you can select feature subtypes and tree, add, select it, and it's going to show the points of the location of the tree. So there's the tree, and then from there, you can import like a low poly, like a low poly mesh of trees, and then orient the trees the base of the trees to there and you can have a detailed model of the suburbs with trees inside of it so that's for today and i'll see you in the next one